trust in the time of trial. The Christian's hope does not rest upon the sandy foundation of feeling. Those who act from principle will behold the glory of God beyond the shadows and rest upon the sure word of promise. They will not be deterred from honoring God, however dark the way may seem. Adversity and trial will only give them an opportunity to show the sincerity of their faith and love. When desperation settles upon the soul, it is no evidence that God has changed. He is the same yesterday and today and forever. You are sure of the favor of God when you are sensible of the beams of the Son of Righteousness. But if the clouds sweep over your soul, you must not feel that you are forsaken. Your faith must pierce through the gloom. The riches of the, of the grace of Christ must be kept before the mind. Treasure up the lessons that, he ha that his love provides. Let your faith be like Job's, that you may declare, though he slay me, yet will I trust in him. Lay hold on the promises of your heavenly Father, and remember his former dealing with you and with his servants, for all things work together for good to them that love God. The most trying experiences in the Christian's life may be the most blessed. The special providences of the dark hours may encourage the soul in future attacks of Satan and equip the servant of God to stand in fiery trials. The trial of your faith is more precious than gold. You must have that abiding confidence in God that is, that is not disturbed by the temptations and arguments of the deceiver. Take the Lord at his word. It is faith that familiarizes the soul with the existence and presence of God. And when we live with an eye single to, the, to his glory, we discern more and more the beauty of his character. Our souls become strong in spiritual power, for we are breathing the atmosphere of heaven and realizing that God is at our right hand. We should live as in the presence of the infinite one. And that is taken from uh, That I May Know Him, page 257. And if you will stand with me, we will recite the fourth commandment, which is our custom. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, nor thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all them in them is, and rested the seventh day, Wherefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. You may be seated. Church will begin in a moment. 